So, vitamin D and quercetin are two things that I wanted to share a concept with you. There's been some um, more research, and, and I love looking at uh, the research articles on different uh, micronutrients and botanicals, and in particularly in the conversation of their antiviral properties right now. Well, there's been a lot of uh, investigation into both of the things that I was just mentioning, the D and the quercetin, relative to COVID, and I thought that it would be appropriate to share that. And by, by no means do I intend to convey a concept that these are cures. They are not cures, but they have shown to help people fight and deal with viruses appropriately. And in that context, I, I think it's useful information for everyone to embrace. One of the um, things relative to vitamin D that I've shared in the past is its ability to work synergistically with many other nutrients to help the immune system achieve a neutral state so that it's not overdriven. And one of the um, main risk factors for people succumbing to COVID in particular is the cytokine storm where their lungs actually fill. Well, vitamin D is one of those things that has shown to help to counter the probability of an individual having an overblown cytokine response. And the um, interesting thing to me about that particular factoid is that that's not just a new data point. That's something that was actually observed back in 1918 when we had the worldwide flu epidemic. The same thing was observed then that we're observing now that those individuals that have the lowest titer or volume of vitamin D in their system tend to have worse outcomes. And it's something so simple for each of us to do to make sure that your vitamin D levels are adequate. Now I have a separate uh, D video, so I'm not gonna go into detail on that, but you should know your vitamin D levels. So make sure that if you don't, go to your doctor and get that tested. And you're looking for a blood range of between 60 and 90. Now the range goes all the way down to, well, technically zero, but the, the clinical range would be 30 to 100. And so many people are hovering right down there around that 30 range. It's not going to provide those immunological benefits until you get above 60. So that's it on vitamin D for right now. I want to also mention quercetin, which is a bioflavonoid and it's, it's readily available and very inexpensive. And some of the current literature on quercetin um, has focused on its antiviral binding properties. Now, traditionally, quercetin has been used as an antihistamine and something to help to reduce inflammation within our airways and sinuses. Current literature shows that it may also have a strong impact on the binding of viruses to these angiotensin receptors which is really interesting because if you can both reduce inflammation within your airway and also interrupt viral binding to the very spot that we know that this uh, COVID, excuse me, the, the, the um, SARS-2 actually starts to insert itself into the body so that you could uh, develop this, uh, this infection. What a wonderful thing to act as an obstacle to that. So one more preventative step that an individual could utilize in their repertoire to reduce the probability of adverse response to the infection. So just to recap, we've got our A, our C, our D, our zinc, glutathione, and today I added some quercetin in there. I'm gonna put the references for those two um, articles for, so that you can look them up and read on your own. And I always encourage you to do that. Please do your own research and, and understand that um, if we take the time to put in and learn data points for ourselves and then apply those to ourselves in an active manner, not only can we feel the, the end result of being well because our body will respond to those favorable things that we're doing for it, but it should also give us a peace of mind so that we can step away from any fear-driven behavior because we always make poor decisions when they're driven by fear. So stay away from that. Be well, signing up.